So I'm just going to do a very short reading. Is that okay? Yes. Okay. In about ten minutes, please find it. Right. Okay. This should take me about five. Okay. <laughs> okay. So this this is very near the beginning of the book. So Selena has been uh, the subject of some malicious gossip. It's not true, but anyway, word has got back to her mother, and her mother is not happy. My mom was furious with me and explained how respectable Pakistani girls did not have boyfriends and how could I allow such talk to bring shame upon her in this way? And what will people say? If I get myself a reputation, then no one will want to marry me and I will be dependent on my future sister-in-law and die a lonely old maid with no children of my own to look after me. She spent the best part of an hour relentlessly chiding me and then I spent the next hour reassuring her that Andy was not my boyfriend and I didn't have a boyfriend full stop. It was hard to know at the end of it if my mum believed me or not, but needless to say, she wasn't best pleased, and told me in a nutshell that I should not behave in such a way as to bring the family name and honour into disrepute. This episode with Andy and my mum's general tension culminated in an important announcement she made concerning my future. She was in the kitchen busy chopping the onions for the curry she was about to start cooking. It was a jarry chicken today. She didn't have to say anything. I could tell with the aroma of the spice blend that she had roasted and ground. The fragrance was unmistakable. I had made the chapati dough for her earlier on, and it was one of the chore, one, as it was one chore my mum really disliked. I had a quick nosy of her shoulder and decided to make myself some coffee. As I flipped the kettle on, my mum left what she was doing, washed and dried her hands, and went and sat at the dining table. Come, Selina, I must talk with you about something very important. She beckoned to me to come over and join her. I didn't know exactly when to tell you, she said, but I now think the time is right. I finished making my coffee, stirring the spoon carefully around in my bear ship mug. I came and sat opposite her and speculated in my own mind as to what it might be that my mother was in such a hurry to talk to me about. But really, I hadn't the foggiest. Well, you know how I worry about you, she said, and it's my one wish now to see you married and settled, just like your sister. Henna is thankfully very happy with her husband. I would not have thought about this so early on had it not been for the sadness in our lives of your father leaving us so suddenly. There is also the fact that you have been messing around with boys at school, and a white boy at that. But in truth, your father's death changes everything. In our culture, unmarried children, especially daughters, are a burden on their parents. I don't really mean a physical or financial burden, more like emotional. And making sure you're married off is my duty alone now. Well, coming to the point, you know that your uncle early in Berman was very keen on your marrying his son, mainly because the son himself is so crazy about you. We have been talking about it for some time now. I was aware that about a year ago there had been some talk of a possibility of the union, but I had no idea about recent discussions. Anyway, as far as I could remember, my father had said they would think about it only after I had finished my degree, and even then it would be subject to being agreeable to the marriage proposal. As you have been offered a place at Birmingham University to study law, continued my mum, and your wish is to go there over and above any of the other universities, I've decided that you shall marry Sahil straight after your exams, move down and settle in there, and I will not have to worry about you studying away from home, as you'll be with your husband. What? I shrieked, banging my beloved bear mug down on the table, surprised I hadn't broken it with the sudden force I inflicted upon it, but I was seeing red. How could you decide such a thing without asking me first? Don't I even get to say? Mom, I can't agree to this. Firstly, I'm way too young to be getting married. And secondly, I don't even like him. I can't marry someone I barely say two words to whenever we meet. I can't believe you agree to this. You'll have to call it off. My mom looked straight at me with her most piercing stare, designed to inform me without actually saying it, that I was now beginning to overstep the mark and think about winding my neck in. I will do no such thing, she said. What is this bakwas, this rubbish you are talking? Have you lost hold of your senses? Bargo, where else are you going to find such a good rishta? Such a great offer of marriage does not come along every day, young lady. I know you are a bit younger than your sister was when she got married, and a few years younger than Sahel, but so what? He's such a good catch. He's fine looking, extremely polite and good natured, and above all, from what I have seen, he thinks the world of you. That counts for a lot. They are family, and that's why his parents are agreeable. Were they not related to us, you would have no chance of securing such a wonderful betrothal. Mom, listen to me, I said, with a degree more respect in my voice this time, trying to break her flow. But my mum just carried right on. We are not of the same social status as them, she said, 
we don't have very much. In fact, we have nothing apart from this small house and a few pounds in the bank, but they are a very wealthy family. They have a huge business, many properties, lots of money in the bank. They live in the most wonderfully upmarket area and in such magnificent houses. And they have a mansion in Islamabad. Did you know that? So Hale is an accountant in the family business. And being the only son, he will inherit most, if not all of it anyway. The business, the properties, the lot. And you know he has his own house, so you won't even have to live with the in-laws. And he loves you. I mean, you're getting the total package. How often does that happen for a girl? What is wrong with you? You will be living in a lap of luxury. You will never ever want for anything. To decline such a kind-hearted, generous offer would be disrespectful and disgraceful. What is it would I have left in the wider family? But anyway, I have given my word now, so it is final. No more discussions, no more arguments. But Mom, Dad said, but Mom, nothing. I have said, so I have said. That's it. It's time for you to grow up, young lady. Hannah never gave me any of this lip. Your father spoiled you. That's the real problem here. But he's not here anymore. I am. And I have to do what I think is right. And you will go through with this wedding. You will not act dishonorably in any way so as to damage his family's reputation. And you will keep our ethic intact. An opportunity like this will not come again. And I won't allow you to pass it by. That's it. Bus. Enough. That's it. Thank you.